Let's use this example to practice our debits and credits. Be sure to have your accounting rules and your mnemonic in front of you. And what I would like you to do is, I would like you to first pause the video as we come to the section. Try to attempt to do it yourself, and then you can check whether you got it correct uh, as I do the explanation. So if we're going to do this transaction first. On January 10th, John Hammond invests 200000 in cash in exchange for common stock in Jurassic Inc. I've set up my T accounts in Excel and we know that with this transaction the two accounts that are affected are going to be cash and common stock. So we got to analyze this transaction and figure out what two accounts are affected, again cash and common stock, and how they are affected. John Hammond invests 200,000 in cash in exchange for common stock, so our cash increased by 200,000. What happened to our common stock? Right now we don't have any common stock, therefore the common stock that we issued to owners also increased by 200,000. Now you got to figure out where what goes where using your debit and credit rules. Cash is an asset, the asset increased, therefore it's going to go on your debit side. You're going to put 200,000 right there. You could put the date here if you like, 1-10. Now that's only one side. We've got to have an equal opposite reaction. The second one affected is common stock. Common stock also increased by 200,000. Common stock is an owner's equity account. The normal balance is a credit. So therefore, this transaction will go as a credit of 200000 And again, if you'd like to put your date, it's January 10th. Let's do another one. On January 11th, Jurassic Inc. purchased equipment for 55000 cash. Let's analyze the transaction. What are the accounts affected? We've got cash and then the other one is equipment because we purchased equipment. So those are the two accounts. Let's look at what type of accounts, which one went up, which one went down. Cash decreased because we spent money. What increased? Our equipment. We gained equipment. So equipment increased, cash decreased. Equipment is an asset and if as it's increased, it goes on the same side as the normal balance, so our equipment would be debited by 55000 And we can put the date of January 11th. Now, let's look at the other side. Cash is also an asset, but this time cash decreased, so it has to go on the opposite side as normal balance. Therefore, we would put the 55000 on the credit side for this particular transaction. If you didn't get this right, be sure to go through your accounting rule and understand why. The rule says that the normal balance of a asset account is a debit, so cash is an asset, therefore the normal balance is debit. Any increases go on the same side as the normal balance, which is debit, but this particular transaction, our cash decreased and if an asset decreases, it goes on the opposite side of the normal balance, in this case, the credit side. Okay, let's look, let's look at the next transaction. On January 12th, the company leases retail space and pays $4,000 cash for January's rent. The first thing is we've got to identify the accounts that are affected. So cash is affected, and then we had rent, so it would be rent expense. So I added the rent expense account title here for this C account. Now let's go and see what goes on the debit side, what goes on the credit side. First of all, company paid cash, which means cash went down. Our cash reduced. Cash is an asset. So if the asset decreases, it goes on the opposite side of the normal balance, which means our cash would be credited for $4,000. That would be on January 12th. Now we have to find the opposite, the equal and opposite side. 
what other account was affected by this transaction? Rent expense. Rent expense is an expense account with a normal balance of debit and our rent increased. Rent expense increased by 4000 therefore we would put it on the same side as the normal balance. Again, that is on January 12th. If you notice, we don't have negative amounts. It's either a debit or a credit. The negative amount is determined by the normal balance, the side which the normal balance falls in. And if it's a negative balance, it goes on the opposite side of the normal balance. Our next transaction is on January 13th. It says Jurassic Inc. purchases $5,000 of supplies on account. So first thing we need to do is identify the two accounts that are affected. Sometimes it could be more than two accounts, but a lot of times it's just two accounts. So what's affected? We bought something, which was supplies. Now, this time, did we pay cash for it? No, we didn't. We bought it on account, which means we bought it on credit. If we bought it for credit, that means we've just created a new debt. Our debt is accounts payable. We owe somebody for those $5,000 worth of supplies we bought. Our supplies increased. Supplies are an asset. Assets have a normal balance of debit, so if our asset increases, it goes on the debit side. So supplies increased by 5000 and we're going to put it on the debit side. Now, we got to find what the credit is. We said we had accounts payable. What's the other account affected by this transaction? Accounts payable reflects amounts we owe to outside of the company, which is debt, and it's a liability account. The so liabilities, if you looked at your mnemonic, is a normal credit balance. Therefore, if liabilities increase, as it did in this case, it would go on the credit side. Our liabilities increased by 5000 Therefore, we would put a credit 5000 for this transaction on the 13th of January. Our next transaction says between January 17th and 30th, the company earns $20,000 in revenues. Half of the revenues are cash. Again, what are the accounts affected by this transaction? We have revenues, and then we have cash, because half the revenues were received in cash. But what about the other half? If we didn't receive cash, it would be sold on credit. If we sold goods or services on credit, we have what we call an accounts receivable. It's where people owe us money, us the company. It's where customers owe us money. That's an asset and the account that we put those in is accounts receivable. So this time you had three accounts that are affected by this transaction. Remember, follow the each action has an equal and opposite reaction. So we got to have 20,000 in debits and 20,000 in credits when we're done with recording this transaction. Let's first do revenues. We know that we earn $20,000 in revenues. If you look at your mnemonic, revenues are credits. Normal balance of revenue is a credit. Revenues increase by 20,000, so therefore we would put 20,000 on the credit side. And we'll put January 30th as a date since this occurred over a period of time. Now we also know that we received half of it that in cash. Half of that is ten thousand. So ten thousand dollars cash. Cash is an asset. Our cash increased by ten thousand, therefore it would go on the same side as the normal balance. We would put ten thousand dollars on the debit side for cash. The balance ten thousand remaining is I said an accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is also an asset because it's money that we are waiting to receive from our customers. We've already sold our product or service. We're just waiting to receive that money from our customers, so it's an asset to us. And an asset increased, so we would put the balance 10000 there under accounts receivable. Note that this particular 
transaction had three accounts that were affected by it, but in the end, the total debits were equal to total credits. We debited cash for 10,000, debited accounts receivable for 10,000, which is a total of 20,000 debits, and then we credited revenues for 20,000, which is 20,000 credits. Therefore, your debits equal your credits. Our final transaction is that between January 17th and 30th, the company pays cash for salaries of $6,000 and utilities of $2,000. I had to zoom this out a bit so you could see all the T accounts. So let's look at how this transaction impacts our accounts. First of all, there are three accounts that this transaction impacts, cash, salary expense, and utilities expense. Let's first look at the two expenses. You know that expenses have a normal debit balance, and in this case, expenses increase. So salaries increase by $6,000, utilities increase by $2,000. Increases go on the same side as the normal balance, so therefore you would debit these amounts. So utilities would be $2,000 on the debit side, and salaries would be $6,000 on the debit side. How did we pay for those expenses? We paid them with cash. So we had an $8,000 cash payment for your salaries and utilities. If we paid cash, our cash went down. Cash is an asset, therefore this 8000 needs to go on the opposite side of the normal balance, which would be a credit. We would have a $8,000 credit for cash on the 30th of January. Be sure you understand how to do, how to do your double entry um, for each account. We're going to continue with a little bit more theory, but before we go to theory, I want you to take a balance for all these accounts. Whenever you take a balance, you would draw a line at the bottom, across the bottom of your T account, just like here. I've drawn it for all the accounts. And then you would add the debit side. You would take a total of your debit side. You would take a total for the credit side. And then you would subtract the smaller number from the larger number and put it on the side of the larger number. In this case, if you total up your debits, you would get 210000 if you total up your credits, you would get 67000 So your balance would go on the side of the debit since that is a larger number. How much would that be? It would be 210000 minus 67000 or 143000 That is your balance on your cash account. For common stock, it's easy. You don't have anything on the debit side. So your balance would just be 200000 credit. Next, we'll do the equipment. Equipment again, there's nothing on the credit side, so it will be 55,000 debit. Rent expense, 4,000 debit. Supplies, 5,000 debit. Accounts payable would be 5,000 credit. Your accounts receivable is 10,000 debit. Revenues would be 20,000 credit. Utilities expense, 2,000 debit and salary expenses would be 6,000 debit. Be sure that you understand how to get your uh, balances as well because we will be doing quite a lot of this.